I'm William Mowerman. I'm an anesthesiologist at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, and I'm here to discuss an article entitled The Perioperative Management of Patients with Left Ventricular Assist Devices for Non-Cardiac Surgery that will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. This is a timely topic uh, as left ventricular assist devices are used more and more commonly to manage end-stage heart failure. And while their usage is increasing, their survival after placement of the left ventricular assist device is also increasing. So one-year survival is now 80%. 70% of these patients uh, will be alive two years after these devices. So with more and more of these patients having devices and living longer, they're now presenting uh, for non-cardiac surgery for reasons unrelated to their heart, uh, removal of gallbladder for cholecystitis, broken bones, cancer, et cetera. And this is becoming a big question uh, as to the safety of, of operating on these patients, uh, where they should be operating on, who should be taking care of them in the perioperative period. So we explored the Mayo Clinic practice uh, we reviewed uh, seven years' worth of patients with left ventricular assist devices. We included patients only that had gone home after placement of their device and then come back for a subsequent non-cardiac surgery requiring general anesthesia. And we found 33 patients that required 67 operations, so by far the biggest series published to date. Uh, the average age of the patients was 65. Uh, and the average time between LVAD placement and the need for non-cardiac surgery was right around a year, 11 months. Uh, and what we found is the patients all overall did well. Of those 67 operations, there were three deaths within 30 days. One was a stroke completely unrelated to the operation. Uh, the other two deaths were related to the underlying pathology that the patient presented with and were not, uh, outcomes were not worsened by the fact that they had an operation uh, or a general anesthetic. Uh, we found that about half of the patients uh, could go directly to the post-anesthesia care unit and then to a monitored unit, uh, and about half went to the intensive care unit. <clears throat> there was uh, roughly a, a 27% uh, perioperative complication rate when we included uh, a variety of complications but the vast majority of these were due to bleeding, uh, which we know is, is a difficult thing to manage in LVAD patients in general. I think one important finding here is that the bulk of the patients presented for their operation still on anticoagulation, uh, which is required for the left ventricular assist device. And we reversed that in 65% of those patients without any thrombotic complication. So it seems like in this small series uh, that that was a, a safe approach. We do believe that a large part of our success is our multidisciplinary uh, institutional approach. So whenever possible, these patients see a cardiologist, a heart failure cardiologist preoperatively to make sure they're optimized. Uh, obviously, that's not possible in emergent operations but certainly in elective operations, uh, we do that. They all undergo operation at a single campus hospital uh, in the main operating room. Uh, and and it, within that hospital is our cath lab, our ICU that typically takes care of these patients, heart surgeons, cardiologists. So we have all of those resources at our disposal. Patients all go to a single step down unit or a single ICU where the nurses and physicians are used to caring for patients with LVADs. And then we have a variety of consult teams available to us uh, if needed. So we really strongly believe that this multidisciplinary approach uh, is what led to the success uh, of, of providing these patients with non-cardiac operations. So I think in terms of what we need to do in the future, uh, certainly other centers I think should be encouraged to evaluate their results, particularly large centers uh, that see a, a large number of these patients like we do. <clears throat> and then I think uh, we look just at patients undergoing operations with general anesthesia, but certainly these patients undergo a lot of other procedures. For example, the number one uh, reason for readmission for patients with LVADs is GI bleeding. So they go undergo many endoscopy procedures and I think the next thing for us to do is start evaluating our practices in, in the GI suite, uh, perhaps in the cardiac catheterization lab, where these patients may or may not receive general anesthesia or sedation. Uh, who's involved in their care? Is it RN-directed sedation from a gastroenterologist, or do we have anesthesia personnel uh, involved? And I think we need to start evaluating other, other uh, aspects of these patients' non-cardiac medical care. So I think the take-home point here is these patients can safely undergo non-cardiac surgery uh, is that with the right uh, infrastructure in place, these patients can undergo things like gallbladder removal, gastric banding, repair of fractures, cancer operations uh, in a safe manner.
We hope you benefited from this presentation based on the content of Mayo Clinic proceedings. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you're interested in more information about Mayo Clinic proceedings, visit our website at www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find additional videos on our YouTube channel, and you can follow us on Twitter. For more information on healthcare at Mayo Clinic, please visit www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.